Today I'd like to share with you the key ideas of the constructivist learning theory and compare them to um, the behaviorist theory and the cognitive theories of learning and, um, and talk about Piaget and Vygotsky and how they have impacted the constructivist learning theory. So the key ideas of the constructivist theory are that, is that the, the, the learning environment is very student-centered and very hands-on. The, there's problem solving and the students engage the students sharing responsibility for their learning and the and the the problem solving is real world it's authentic to them they're able to to interact with one another and collaborate whereas the behaviorists believe that the student is learning through observation um, the constructivists believe that the students learning through inquiry and the behaviors believe that the student has no control over altering their learning environment and the constructivists believe that the learning environment should be student-led and student-centered. The um, behaviors mythology would incorporate models and examples to provide to, to provide to students during the instruction. The constructivist would not provide models because they wouldn't want to show the end product. They would want students to to learn through problem solving and learn through inquiry. Um, they would build on previous ideas. The constructivists would build on ideas that students have already learned. The next thing is the um, constructivist compared to the cognitive learning theory. Constructivist learning theory and cognitive learning theory, um, Piaget both has ideas that can, that relates the two together. Um, just as we will get to Piaget talks about and explains how we have to build knowledge based on previous knowledge and that is the constructivist part of it but the cognitive part is simply recalling information that you already have stored the cognitive views learning as recall of stored information Instruction would involve grabbing the students attention attention and helping them recall information by um, by, and then the constructivist would would build on knowledge that they have stored, but they wouldn't stop. They would they would want them to accommodate that to um, foreign objects and new ideas. A cognitive theory wants to utilize the stored information, and the co the constructivist desires students to assimilate and to accommodate information by compare it to, comparing it to previous learned ideas. What assimilation actually is, Piaget explains as involving, is it involves taking information from the world through the senses and comparing it to information that's already stored into the brain. So using your senses to get information and compare it to what you already have stored. Accommodation is when one schema or content is expanded um, to a new idea, such as when we're children and we see a zebra for the first time, we, are, we know what a horse is and what a horse looks like, but when we see the zebra, we may assume that's a horse until our mom comes along to tell us that's a zebra, and then we're able to accommodate the previous, the previous learning we have of a horse and say, okay, horse, zebra, and separate the two. So accommodation is when your knowledge has been expanded. Um, Piaget, though, explains that that children go through different stages of being able to accommodate and assimilate and all students adapt differently and he explains these in his four stages which are sensory motor, pre-operational, concrete operational, and former, formal operations. He also explains that equilibrium is when there's a balance between the environment and the cognitive structure. So you have your cognitive structure is the rate that you're developing um, and the stages that you go through, but also you have to have a balance of that and the learning environment which is um, driving your cognitive development. So there has to be a balance. Um, when that doesn't happen, it leads to um, disequilibrium, which is whenever there's an inability to fit new information. And that often come, causes students to come to a plateau in their learning. This is um, when, you're, when your schema, you're not able to add anything to it. And so the current knowledge you have stored has, um, has, is struggling to be expanded. Um, Vygotsky also um, talks about scaffolding and um, 
the zone of proximal development, which also go along with the co constructivist views of learning. The zone of proximal development is whenever a child has a certain area, a certain um, cognitive level they can reach independently, um, and they're able to do that without any help. But it's our job as educators to scaffold their learning or build on their knowledge to help them to get to, to farther their knowledge. To the zone of proximal development, where they can get with our help. Um, so what we can so the zone of proximal development would be what we can get them to with, with helping them and, and scaffolding their learning. We recognize what a child cannot do independently, and we are assisting them to reach that point and to reach their goal. Yeah, Vygotsky also talks about private speech. Private speech is, is a milestone when, it's, when a child is able to, to reach that point. It's whenever your words actually are able to become thoughts. Um, he, he describes language as one of the most important tools that the humans can utilize. It's an internal communication. Um, this happens when the child is usually three or older. Um, private speech involves whenever you're able to actually connect, not only con not only to have thoughts, but connect those thoughts with words. Um, a few a few differences, though, um, a few ways that we can talk about constructivist learning theory in the classroom. Um, a constructivist learning environment. One one approach that you could use to implement the constructivist theory would be the something known as a PBL or project-based learning. Project-based learning is very, um, very constructive. It's it's taking a problem that's authentic and that's real world, and you're having students to collaborate with one another, and they're they're interacting, they're self-regulating their learning to solve the problem. Whether um, but but the project or the problem is supposed to be the learning. The learning is not up front. You are not telling the student what's going to happen. They are, they are solving it through the, the learn. They're solving the problem and that is the learning. Um, this, this, is a, this requires the students to think independently and be very, it's very inquiry based. The next approach that is very um, constructive is something known as a reciprocal peer teaching. And this is when the student is alternating roles between the teacher and the student. This causes students to, sh to feel a, a great deal of responsibility for the learning. Um, this learning approach causes students to not only share their responsibility, to, but to be very actively engaged. Whenever they're responsible for the teaching part, not just the learning part, they know that, some, that there's a goal that has to be met. They, they feel their responsibility and they're very engaged and they're very excited to share what they've learned and to actually get to teach. Um, there's, there's the, the problem becomes authentic because they're responsible for sharing it. They're actually formulating their own questions because just as we teach, we have to think of questions that, that's producing higher levels of thinking. The student is now creating their own questions um, to teach the content. And then the last approach that I have is the jigsaw approach. The jigsaw approach is whenever you have a whole class and you divide them into smaller groups and you would assign each group a subset of a larger topic, such as in my class I have done this with the biomes. When I'm teaching the biomes, it's a very large topic. So I may divide the biomes and I may let this student pick a biome and they may pick the tundra and the next student may pick the desert and the next pick the rainforest and then every group has a biome that they're responsible for researching and collaborating together and and um, and sharing the facts with one another and then at the end of the class they share whole class and now students, students are interacting they're learning from one another but they're also at the same time teaching um, this learning approach is very student-centered. It also incorporates social interaction um, into the constructivist approach of learning. Not only are they having to research, which would be the inquiry base, but they're problem solving on how to present this. So that's the brief overview of a constructivist learning theory and the um, assimilation, accommodation, uh, equilibrium and disequilibrium that P. 
Piaget has presented to us and the zone of proximal development and private speech and scaffolding that we've gathered from Vygotsky to implement the constructivist learning theory into our classroom. It's very important that we um, pay much attention to those, those aspects of it. Um, and personally, I am a constructivist. I love the idea of students being engaged and being responsible for their learning and trying to solve a problem rather than just learning from us telling. So, thank you.